Hi, everyone. Um, just to say that this is being recorded, I hope you are okay with this, uh, because we're going to share it with other uh, applicants who are interested in the program uh, in the Center for Global Media and Communication. Um, I'll, um, I will introduce myself and I'll speak briefly about what we offer and what you expect to do and then take some questions. I apologize beforehand because I didn't prepare any slides, but I think uh, I can post some slides that uh, uh, the marketing uh, and the marketing team can perhaps uh, share with you uh, because we do have slides ready uh, that I can share, uh, but I didn't bring them with me today. So, um, welcome. My name is Dina Matar. I'm professor of political communication and uh, Arab media at the Center for Global Media and Communication. Um, I am also the convener of the degree uh, the MA Global Media and Communication. We also have another degree in the center, which is the MA Media and Development. I'm happy to answer questions about uh, either of these programs when we come to it. So presumably all of you are interested in studying media. And I've just actually purchased a book um, that I will show you, hopefully you could see it. Um, it's, and I hope you can see me. It's a book that is called um, Media, Why It Matters. Very, very tiny, uh, written by Nick Caldry, uh, who is a professor of media and communication at the LSE, LSE my alma mater. So basically, um, really interesting. And I just started reading the first chapter and it says, well, how can we escape from media? So one of the exercises that the LSE does uh, or the L LSE colleagues do in their classes is to say, okay, let us try and not live with media for even an hour or half a day. Okay, let's start with half a day, it doesn't work. What about an hour? What does that mean? Meaning that you have to leave your phones aside, you have to leave your screens aside, you have to leave your uh, computers aside, you have to leave your WhatsApp, your Facebooks, your any sort of communicative um, medium. Uh, and you just uh, try and, uh, you know, and try and live without that. How does that feel? You know, whether you could do that or not is, uh, is an interesting exercise in itself. And he kind of goes, goes on and he says, what is this thing about our obsession with media? And why, what does it, what do we mean by the question of media deprivation? Okay, so it's worth uh, getting the book and just reading because he does go through different sections where he thinks about okay, what, what is it we are talking about? So the course in global media, of course, it's a master's degree. So it is a degree where we, we take you through the key concepts, the key theoretical frameworks within which uh, we can begin to understand uh, why media uh, matter. So, and why, why it is important to understand um, what media means for us as people, what it means for politics, what it means for economics, what it means for culture, what it means for religion, what it means for history, and every other discipline you could think of, and every other area that we are concerned with. And of course, the role of media has become even much more important, or its place in our lives and embeddedness in our lives has become much more important with the crisis, different crises that uh, humanity has gone through, and the latest of which is the COVID-19 uh, crisis, and obviously the climate change. But there are diff different crises that are rather local that we do not hear about because they are not reported in the media. And this is another question that we try and look at. To think about the inequalities uh, of media, to think about the inequalities of structures, inequalities of access, inequalities in relation to uh, gender, race, uh, and racial and other representational practices. As it happens, I was listening yesterday to a book talk, and the book talk was by an author who wrote a biography of the post-colonial scholar Edward Said. Now, Edward Said, we come across him quite a lot in post-colonial theory, in literary theory, we come across him in different ways, but we also come across him in media. Because what he was trying to say in his book, Orientalism, and this you will see why it is important to talk about that in relation to what we are going to study, is the question of representation. Media is about representation. It's representing, it's how 
people are represented, how they are talked about, how they are imagined, how they are, uh, how they are visualized, and what happens with that? You know, how do you relate that to the political? And the main issue that comes out of Saeed's Orientalism is the question that representation, this word representation matters because it's about the political. And the political does not mean we're talking only about uh, political systems. What we're talking about here, the political meaning, how we relate to each other, how we understand our responsibilities and how do we um, expect our representatives or our uh, leaders to represent us. So these are broad issues that we start with. Now, let me talk a little bit much more uh, kind of concisely about the MA Global Media. What do we do in this class? So the MA Global Media and Communication begins with the understanding that when we are talking about media and communication, we're not only talking about news media. We're not only talking about Facebook or uh, digital media platforms or uh, radio or television. We are actually thinking about communi communication and platforms of communication as being diverse. So it can be even uh, the wall behind Laura. You can see that wall behind Laura is a School of Oriental and African Study. Welcome to SOAS. There is a flag there, which I think is a Palestinian flag. Uh, there are different things that are there. And so these are representations. You know, the color, the color matters. You know, the choice of the color in Welcome to SOAS is an important one because it comes up in, in our logo. Logo, who puts up the Palestinian flag uh, is kind of interesting as well. So in a sense, you look at all, um, all platforms and genres within which we communicate, in which we communicate, or we use for representation, or in which we are, uh, or, or I'm talking we, I mean people in general are represented. But there is something, so basically we start with this, is that communication is not only reduced to news media, it's every form of communication. It can't be dance, it can be music, it can be uh, any, any type of performance, it can be the arts, um, and it is media. But obviously, as we go through, uh, through the course, you'll find that there is a little bit of bias, not bias, intentional bias, but kind of the readings are much concerned with, with what people do with uh, social media platforms, digital spaces, and so on, because this is really what we are living and what we are dealing with in our everyday lives. So we begin with, with that and we, we, we have three main important thematics that we use to go through the first term. And the thematics are related to how do you understand media without uh, thinking of the economy, the political economy of media, who owns what, structures and so on. So this becomes a, a very important, particularly when we're talking about the global south, you know, Facebook in the global south, are there equivalents of that? Obviously, China does have uh, different platforms. There are new uh, platforms that have been produced uh, in, in different parts of, of the world. But what, what we find is that the structures of these platforms are very similar. They are based on uh, a, a relationship between the economics and, 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 and communication, so what we call political economy of communication. So we begin with that. Um, then we move on to discuss the relationship between media and politics in the broader sense, because this is an area that is so important. Think about bias, think about surveillance, think about uh, uh, populism, authoritarianism, hate speech, um, anything that is about the political broadly understood. And we end with cultural studies. Uh, so cultural studies becomes, uh, or, or understanding media cultures, communicative cultures, rather than cultural studies. But obviously we are using uh, the concepts and the tools of cultural studies to understand what cultures are. You know, what are we talking about here? We're not talking about cultures as being uh, customs and traditions. We're talking about cultures as ways of life, systems of feeling. And within these three big thematics, we break down uh, the, the, you know, we break down the weeks into 
uh, you know, specific lectures talking about the key approaches and then trying to critique them or look at them from the Global South perspective. Can we just transport or um, translate uh, theories and concepts that have been uh, basically, uh, uh, that have emerged basically in Western democracies or Western cultures within a his specific historical context? Can we transport them to the uh, Global South? How can we look at Global South media experiences? And how can we look at Global South, south uh, cultures and digital cultures? And here it becomes really exciting because you will find that there are differentiations. When we say the Global South, we don't mean that, you know, it's the Global South, um, meaning Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, as, as being a monolithic space. We look at differentiations within that space. But again, one of the things that we also think about uh, in terms of what is it that we offer at SOAS that is different from elsewhere, it is this idea that our knowledge of the world has been constructed or we have in, in a particular way that we, we, we kind of uh, have like the global north and the global south. So imagine a map of the world, the, the maps that you normally see. And you'll find that in this map you have at the top, you have uh, the North Americas, Europe, perhaps Russia and a bit of China. And then at the bottom, you have Africa, Asia, Latin America, um, well, the Middle East comes in the middle, and this is, you know, some, you know, kind of a, a, a naming of the Middle East is problematic in many ways. So what about, you know, what, what do we expect to learn? What we expect to learn is that what if we invert this map uh, upside down and look at it with the uh, global south coming at the top and the global south at the bottom? Now, just imagine that. And the way that we would like to build up your critical skills and your thinking, particularly in relation to um, global media and communication, is to try and trouble and to, um, you know, kind of uh, contest, contest all these assumptions that we have about the flow of communication, going always from the north to the south, rather than in many directions, troubling our knowledge about the global south by looking at what the what the global what, what global south peoples do and we're not talking about the global you know people's just being positioned there we're also thinking about the diasporas people who have migrated and so on so it is the inter interconnections between them so this is basically what we try and do in the global media uh, program and the way that it is constructed is uh, we have a, a compulsory module which you take in term one and you also take in term two. So this is compulsory, you have to do it. There's another compulsory module that you take in term two, which is called um, research methods. And this is really important because it helps you think about the methodology that you will be using um, when you're doing your research. Your dissertation will be the, the, uh, the main output of this degree, which you will be hopefully very proud of and they could, you could show either to uh, employers publish. We have had many of our master's students actually publish their dissertations in books and in uh, journals. And many, uh, and some of our students have continued to do their PhDs. So, and then you have to take three other modules in term one and two other modules in term two. You could take the modules from uh, the Center for Global Media uh, or you could take it from Center for Gender Studies or the Law Department where they are all based, but also you can take it from across the school. And this is the beauty of it, which you can mix and match depending on your uh, expertise. So the other modules that we offer in, uh, in term one uh, are the following. There's one module that is called Prejudice, Bias and uh, uh, Misinformation, very topical. You know, it's uh, and it's uh, uh, the convener is Dr. Dunya Mahluli. She's a brilliant scholar. She has done a lot of work on that. Studies in global digital cultures. We think about again uh, questions of surveillance, digital surveillance, counter surveillance, uh, questions of uh, you know uh, engagement with digital uh, from the global south. 
uh, we also, you can take uh, the uh, media and development uh, program as an option because it's offered as a module in term one and as a module in term two. Um, and then you could take um, in term two, you have political international political communication, which is a much more focused, um, you know, kind of module on the relationship between politics and communication, looking at propaganda, bias, uh, public opinion, uh, media and conflict, media and war, uh, foreign policy uh, and media, etc. And in term two, you could also take transnational communities and diasporic communication, which is uh, about diasporas. But the interesting thing about it is that it's not only about diasporas, it looks again into the questions of religion and media and so on. Now, as we go through the classes, you will find that you could apply you know, you could think about gender and media, you could think about race and media, you could think about different aspects of that uh, in the um, in the various uh, weeks that we, we work with. But uh, one of the important things that we do in the class is that we, you know, we kind of give you the theory, but we also have specific readings that are called case studies. Now, the importance of case studies is that they do give you uh, the Global South perspective. And they are written mostly by scholars from the regions that we, are, we study. And they look at uh, how do uh, people use media in different ways, while also speaking back to the theory or perhaps introducing new concepts, new theoretical uh, backgrounds. Now, one of the th uh, last things I want to mention is that this degree is interdisciplinary. Okay, there is, you know, if somebody comes to tell you that media is a discipline or the study of media is a dis discipline, of course, it started in sociology and social psychology. That's how it started. And in some parts, like political communication, it started in politics. But because it kind of draws and builds on different uh, uh, disciplines, it, it, it is an interdiscipline um, or intradiscipline. Uh, it is uh, very much like gender studies, interdisciplinary approach, uh, where again, you build up on, you know, you kind of use, uh, you, you kind of bring in different approaches, theoretical approaches to try and understand uh, global concerns. And uh, finally, you are in the right place because, you know, Whoever talks about the global challenges as being climate change, as being, you know, COVID, as being anything else, populism, there is a very important global challenge, and that is the digital. What it is one of the most pertinent and uh, most pressing concerns. So whichever jobs you want to go into, you know, if you have the grounding in understanding communication, you will be really fine. Um, if you want to ask me where do our students go to after their work, I can answer that. But uh, I, 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 um, I now have been speaking for 20 minutes and I look forward to having your questions. There's someone who wants to yeah. Oh, I can let them in. Just to say, everybody, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. You should be able to um, speak and engage um, or to pop your questions in the chat if you would rather. Um, hi, I have a question. Yeah, hi. hi. Okay, so the degree is more theoretical than a practical one or... Uh... It's a, a combination between theoretical and practical. Okay, when you say practical, you mean do we teach you how to do journalism or how to? Yes. Yeah. yes. The, it is implicit in the degree. We don't teach you how to do journalism. Now, I'll have to give you my background. I worked, okay. uh, I worked as a journalist for uh, 17 years before I decided to go to academia and do my master's and PhD. Yeah. And I tell you, even when I started working in in journalism it is it cannot be taught it is by mm -hmm. practice you know you practice you practice doing journalism so one mm -hmm. of the things that you will be doing that there, there, there is one course that you could take which is called uh podcasting which is in term two 
But you could do several things. One is to uh, be engaged in writing blogs uh, because that's a way of writing. Um, secondly, we, we, we do get the opportunities for some internships and we support that. Um, and, and thirdly, uh, we do have we do have uh, some contacts with uh, with the industry. But the most important thing, and we find that happens to many of our students, many of them end up going to work with the media. OK, so some go and work with the uh, UN, uh, UN agencies, NGOs and so on. Some go to government, some go to teaching, some fin continue to work in some go to PR agencies. But we have. Uh, we have a substantial number that have end up, end up, ended up working in communication related area, areas. Because one of the important things of doing the degree is to understand how to interpret, how to, how to ask the right questions. And this is what journalism is about. You know, if you are able to ask the right questions, if you are able to um, think about which questions to ask and who to approach and who to choose to ask the questions from, then that is that is a journalism in, in practice. In short answer to your question, we do not over, uh, offer practice. If you want to do practice, you know, there are universities such as City University that offers um, degrees in journalism. Okay, and I taught that so I know exactly what, what, what is being offered. Uh, but it you know it is a we don't we don't do that at SOAS. SOAS is a, is a place where you come to you know uh, do your critical thinking. You do have a very distinctive degree that is very well regarded uh, in different parts of the world. And uh, if you do uh, well, you will really get to places very easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, you mentioned, as I remember, the political communication. So it's part from the degree, or it's a separate one that we can. Uh, it's part of. It's part of the degree. It's a module that you take uh, as part of the degree. And uh, uh, if you want to take it, it's it's an option. So it is offered in term two, um, and uh, it is really uh, quite you know. It's, it's a course that I've designed, and uh, obviously that's my specialization. So uh, in, in terms of the academic specialization, so it's really a, a, a very interesting class. Um, yeah. We have students coming from uh, different uh, parts and, and in all our classes, as in all our classes. I also teach a course on the Middle East, for if anyone is from the Middle East, um, which is called uh, mediated cultures uh, of the Middle East, politics and communication in term two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so so it's, it's basically, you know, encourage you to speak to other students if you want to speak to our current students or some of our alumni um, and, and see what you could get uh, out of the course. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I will be happy because I learned at the university English literature and political science. So. Uh, oh, great! Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great combination. <laughs> yeah, and I'm from the Middle East also. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, any other questions? Do ask, I mean, uh, it's, um, are the degrees more suitable for mid-career journalists or fresh graduates? Do you get many mature students? Could you talk about the kind of, yeah, do you have an offline version of the Global Media and Digital Cultures program? Um, are you talking, okay, so, uh, so now, thank you so much for the question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer each one. So uh, are the degrees more suitable for mid-career journalists or fresh graduates? Either we have a combination of both. We've had people who have had maybe even 15 years uh, of uh, journalist uh, background coming to do the degree because it's exactly what happened to me, um, which is that um, you know you realize after a long time working as a journalist, you realize that there's something missing in uh, in the narratives or the stories that. Uh, uh, journalists write and it's not anything against them it's you know the type of, of the job you have a fast paced uh, real time information that you have to produce but one of the things that I found very uh, you know that I needed to kind of 
help myself understand was the context, you know, the background. Why do people, why do people fight uh, for, um, you know, why do people, why are people ready to kill themselves uh, in a war that doesn't mean, uh, seem to make sense, for example. So I found that by, by doing, a, a, I did my master's in, in political science and then by doing my PhD in media and communication, I was able to really begin to look at other questions that I didn't see in my career as a journalist. So, and we have many journalists who join us who want to do the same thing. And it's really exciting because the other thing that I want to say is that um, academia, you know, academics um, like myself and scholars, we write stories in different ways. We are writing stories, but we are writing interpretations of the world in a particular way with a particular language. And journalists write as well. Uh, so in a sense, you are doing the same job, but with a different perspective, um, perhaps more uh, and, and more analytical when you are looking, uh, using a, an academic uh, voice. So, so it becomes interesting. So in a sense, you look, you, you look at, you, when you are working as a journalist, you feel you're on top of the world, you know, nobody knows anything apart from yourself. And then when you, you begin to have questions, you go to academia and you realize that academia's main concern is to attack journalism. <laughs> so it was that type, this type of constant battle that goes on between, you know, um, academics uh, kind of uh, obsessing with the media and you know uh, criticizing it and then the media obsessing about academics and criticizing them for the language that they use and for the way that they uh, rep represent the world so it's about knowledge it's about how do you produce knowledge you know what type of knowledge is is credible and so on so knowledge production is at the center of academic learning and and critical skills we do get many mature students uh, so it's rather nice to have them because um, they do bring in a different, much more, um, a different perspective, which, which is, and, and so you have the combination of both. <clears throat> now remember, I was a mature student as well. And it was really great fun because coming fresh as a, gra a fresh graduate, as opposed to a mature student, your experiences and expectations are different. But what we try and do, and this is why our classes are not huge, we don't have, you know, we normally have, the cohort is normally uh, around 40, 40 students. So we do have uh, access uh, to each student and we begin to understand and uh, work with them to meet their expectations and, and to help them uh, achieve the learning outcomes that we put on our programs. And that is, you know, that that is uh, that is helpful. So when you have the combination of the mature and the graduate, you you will find the interaction in the classroom is is quite exciting uh, in, uh, in in different ways. Uh, and then do you have an offline version of the global media and digital cultures program. Uh, I think you are asking about the distance learning uh, program. Um, and that is, uh, yes, the global media and communication class that I'm talking about is uh, the class that we offer uh, offline, which we offer on campus. Okay, so it's a one year program. If you have a part time student, they can take it over two years. Um, and so that is allowed as well. So uh, the programs are very similar in terms of the, um, you know, the structure. But the online one, the distance learning one is geared towards those students who cannot, who are working full time who cannot come uh, to London for different reasons. And they, they need to be able to do the learning over a two year period. So the distance learning is a two year program where they take only four modules. So, uh, and then they do the dissertation as well. So it's slightly different uh, in terms of the structure, but in terms of content, it is the same. Uh, Richard, you asked a question about attributes and characteristics are so as looking for from students who may be considering this kind of degree. Well, first of all, you know, you've got, you've got the requirements of the degree, uh, which is a, a high 2-2 two, two or a 2-1. Uh, it means from any 
discipline. So it can be from the humanities or from the social sciences. Uh, we have students who come from a business background and we have students who come from a science background. Um, I myself started as a science student, so it just doesn't matter. Um, but what, uh, what attributes we look, you know, when you are writing your uh, application, do tell us in your personal statement, what is it that makes you interested in studying media? Okay, and so you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can think about, okay, so the attributes are, okay, so you obviously want to study, to study the course for a particular reason, whether it's reason to improve in your working in environment, whether to get to, to have a new career, or whether it is to uh, understand the role of media in society. Perhaps you are, you know, kind of worrying about a particular aspect of media, maybe the echo chambers, maybe you are worrying about, uh, you know, the political systems, uh, populism, and uh, maybe you're worried uh, about racism uh, and media. Maybe you're worried about gender, uh, gen you know, representations of gender, uh, and other identities. So write about that, you know, be open and say, this is, you know, this is what I'd like to do. For those students who uh, want to do media and development, maybe you want to understand, okay, what is this development we are talking about? You know, what do we mean by media and, and development? The fact that you have all these NGOs, and so on, going to the so-called uh, uh, develop, underdeveloped or developing world, uh, trying to uh, to help uh, to help the communities uh, according to their uh, mission statements. So, what type of what type of development? Whose development is it? Are we all trying to think of development in terms of moving towards? Uh, democratization um, as in the Western world. How, how do we look at that? How can we critique it? How are uh, communities in the Global South represented? We have a huge amount of programs uh, around um, hunger, around uh, migration, around conflict, um, and we do have um, a lot of uh, productions made. And we have the critique of that saying, you know, why do we need the white Western um, humanitarian personality to come and save uh, save us or save, let us say, quote unquote, women uh, in Afghanistan or somewhere else? So all these questions come up, you know, we think about them. We kind of, you, you will find by the end of, of the degrees here at SOAS, you will, and this is something I'm not making up, it's from our students, they say, you know, we now never watch a television program uh, in the same way that we used to. So, you know, we're, we're sitting there trying to, to cr criticize the way that, you know, who is being asked the question, who is asking the question, the framing of the questions by the journalist, um, the, the whole debate, uh, who is structuring the debate? How does that relate to politics? You know, who is trying to set the agenda? So you begin to ask the question, even if you're watching a film, uh, you begin to, to ask these questions. And it's so exciting because um, this is what we call critical skills, because critical skills are needed in every job uh, you will be doing. Uh, thanks, Laura, for putting up the, um, yeah. The, 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 the link to the distance learning program. Any other questions? Um, hi, Leah. I, yeah, hi. Um, so the duration of the MA degree is going to be two years or one year? Well, it depends on you. Uh, most um, of the students do it one year. But if you want to take it over two years, then you are welcome to do that. Okay, including the thesis statement, do you mean for when I want to, to write the thesis? Yes, yes. So, so let us say you're doing a one year. You started okay. at the end of September, you know, you start at the end of September of any given year. Yeah. And then you finish all the teaching components uh -huh. uh, by uh, the end of March. 
Wow, okay. It is very, you know, it is very- It's formal. very intensive, you mean? Uh, all, all our degrees, all our master's degrees are similar there, you know, you finish in, in yeah. Uh, it, it, it feels, it doesn't feel that in, intensive, I must say, because you'll yeah. find that um, if you organize, you, and, 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 you know, we, and your academic advisor and, you know, the program director and the convener will help you structure your, your week and your time. And you will be offered all sorts of support that you need in terms of writing your essays and finishing everything on time. But you finish the teaching, but then you finish all your coursework in uh, the beginning of May. And that mm -hmm. leaves time for you to write your uh, dissertation. And the dissertation, you begin to think about your dissertation, your thesis, uh, in, uh, at the end of December or January of each year, uh, of each academic year. And you talk to your chosen supervisor, you have meetings with them all through the summer until you finish writing and you submit it in September. So this is the whole year. If you're doing it over two years, you do um, half the number of uh, taught classes in year one mm -hmm. and the other half in year two and your dissertation will be at the end, of, you know, in, in beginning in May of the second year where you submit it in September uh, of two years. Uh, okay, so all the master degrees last uh, just one year in uh, in UK because here in Palestine we're used to submit thesis statement at the end of the second year. So, yeah, no, I know. No, it's different. Um, and Palestine, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, because what you, you you know it's you you could you could take it over two years and actually your fees will be half the fees uh, for each of that year. So it depends on you. Ah, okay. It depends on how you want to do it, but but know that the uh, we we do it in, in one year, and that's because uh -huh. we have most of our students are international students, and they you know they take and and you know they want to take a year out to finish the masters and, and begin work. Uh, so, but yeah, it depends on you. Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mayal. Uh, now, Richard, what, what books or resources uh, could you, type of careers, Sonam? Um, yeah, type of careers, you, you, journalism, um, you go into journalism, you go into UN work, you go into charities, you go into NGOs, you go into uh, any uh, civil service, uh, you can go into teaching. Um, and so these are the careers that you can pursue. We, we have a very uh, efficient career service department uh, where they have career fairs where you, you attend and you go and you kind of uh, network with, uh, you know, uh, uh, with um, companies and, uh, you know, employers and so on. And you find what you want to do. So I have, I have a, for example, an Iranian student who really managed to get onto a, a very prestigious Iranian, new Iranian news agency reporting from London. So she stayed in London, but now she wants to do a PhD as well. So there are all sorts, all sorts of these possibilities. Uh, and then in preparation for the course, Richard, um, can you send me an email and I'll send you a list? Because I think one of the key books that you might want to read is a book called Media and Power because I forgot to mention that the key point that we want to talk about and, and kind of underlines everything we talk about is the power of the media. We all think media are power, you know, even though uh, we would like not to think so. We all assume media are powerful. And because we think that media can influence uh, public opinion and can influence how uh, uh, international relations are uh, talked about, it can influence the way that some people are represented in a particular way. Uh, Layal is from Palestine and I'm Palestinian. So, you know, the representation of minorities, disadvantaged, marginalized groups does matter uh, because it does matter for, uh, for different reasons. And it's important to understand uh, the role of media in that. So what underpins everything is media and power. So the, the book that you might want to read in preparation is a book called Media and Power uh, by James Curran. And you will find it on Google. You know, it's, it's available as PDF on Google. You can read it 
uh, at your leisure and, and you know, see what you could take away from it. It is written by a Western scholar, but, but the good thing about it is that it gives you, um, you know, the background to understanding media theory. And there are many other books uh, around globalization and media because we do start the course with, 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 the, with the language of globalization because we're talking about global media. We're talking about the Netflixes. We're not talking about uh, the uh, Amazons. We're talking about the you know, uh, Instagrams. We're talking about the WeChats uh, from China and, and different other transnational uh, and uh, international and global uh, media uh, platforms. Does the course include internship work experience? As I explained, you know, the career services will, uh, you will have uh, workshops and events where you, you will be invited for internships. So we've had someone, um, a, a friend of mine from Intern News, which is a well-known news uh, agency that is, um, I think it's based uh, in, in, um, um, in Germany somewhere. Uh, but basically what, he sent an email saying, we need some of your students uh, to apply for internships uh, because we need someone who has the experience of the Global South to work with us um, as an intern. Um, Richard, it's better if you send by email to me and I'll write my email here. Yes, that's my email. Uh, Laura, thank you for writing that. It's, it's better if you write to me by email and I'll send you some readings. Um, social media element uh, to the program. Everything is social media, yeah. So we are, uh, this year, we have, because of the COVID, we have been having our lectures uh, on Zoom, but then we've had the classes on campus and some people were not able to come on Zoom. But what do, what do we mean by a social, you know, a social media element to the program? Uh, we have a blog, uh, and we invite you all um, and invite our students to write on that blog. And we also encourage students to tweet and use their Instagram to uh, talk about that. But I think most importantly, we encourage students to have their own WhatsApp group so that they can communicate amongst themselves on the WhatsApp. We will have a student representative who will uh, kind of uh, be um, uh, taking the concerns of the class to the class uh, leader, to the teacher, the module uh, leader, and then you know we can we can deal with that. So in a sense, social media is used in different ways, and we use it in our case studies because what we are looking at to try and understand what's happening in social media, we look at the text and language, we look at. Uh, the, the distribution, we look at the um, recirculation of some mes messages. We analyze hashtags. What do they mean? You know, um, we currently have a campaign uh, called at Black Lives Matter, which you all know about. You know, what does it mean? You know, the language of, of the campaign is quite interesting. We think about the affect and emotion. So what do you look for in references? Do they need to be academic? They can be both. Uh, they can be professional and they can be academic in terms of references. So if you have a very good reference, uh, you've been working as a journalist, uh, that would be also acceptable. And if you have any problems, just send me an email and, and let me know. Any other questions, please? So we are very passionate about what we do. And you will see, uh, okay, so I forgot to mention something else. Um, in addition to giving you classes and so on, and you know, kind of helping you, um, we have office hours where you come and you know, talk about anything. We have a, a very uh, rigid uh, academic advising system. But as part of our Center for Global Media and Communication uh, offerings, we have a, a research seminar every, every other week because one week we do Center for Gender Studies and the other one we do Center for Global Media and Communication. And this research seminar, we invite uh, scholars who have been, uh, who are working, you know, who have a contribution to make and that will make sense to you relating to your, uh, to your degree. So, and we all can bring journalists, we can bring filmmakers to speak at these, um, at these uh, events. 
So a chance for you to network and a chance for you to understand how to apply theory in practice. How to how do you how do you how do these people how do they how do they manage to take a conceptual framework, a theory, and then apply it to a particular case study? We also present our work because we are not only teaching, we are also doing research at the same time as teaching. So we can present our work, we can talk about uh, you know, the latest uh, article or book chapter or book maybe we have been working on. And we invite you all to come to that. It's great fun. We have one uh, taking place tomorrow, Thursday at uh, 5 uh, to 7 p.m. where we have a colleague coming from Westminster University. And he's going to talk about a, a term called Afrocology uh, and understanding uh, African media. So looking for, I, 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 you know, I think uh, he, he comes from Zimbabwe. So it's uh, very interesting to hear what he has to say. Uh, on, on this topic. So we have a lot of stuff. We also have one of our former master's students who finished uh, last year, and he's a distinction student. He's done really well. He's going to talk about his uh, dissertation as a master's student, where he wrote about the, um, a, a, the Chilean uh, media, the legacy media in Chile, and uh, the activism. I mean, Chile has been going uh, to go uh, um, Chile has been going through a, uh, a series of, uh, of protests. And so instead of looking at how people are using digital media, he decided to look at the legacy press, meaning uh, the long-standing uh, newspapers that do have a, a connection with the power elite. You know, sort of, you know, that the political elite and the media elite have been working closely together. So we're looking forward to his paper and it will be in two weeks time. Thank you, Laura. That's really uh, very kind of you to put the details of the event tomorrow. Please um, do come. You're most welcome. I'll be chairing. We're going to do it by Zoom so uh, you can join us. It's at 5 p.m. London time. So for you in, in Palestine, Layal, it's like seven, I think, late. Yeah. But we have other events that you could come to all through the, the, the week from other departments. So, uh, so uh, I, am, I, am, uh, I work with the uh, SOAS Middle East Institute and we have events every Tuesday for those people who want to learn more about the Middle East. We have a China Institute and they have uh, uh, events taking place all the time. Um, and yeah, I hope I have answered all the questions. Any other questions from anyone else? Uh, yes, I have one. <laughs> Go on. Okay, so uh, as you, as I said, uh, I learned uh, English literature and political sciences. So, and I'm thinking to do a master degrees uh, in uh, international relations. A master's degree in international relations or political science, something like that. There is a combination between politics and international relations. So, my question is. A uh, which master degree uh, would be more suitable, a global communication or um, international relation if I want to work in the field of journalism? Oh, I think uh, the global media would be better for you in this sense. So my answer to you is that you could take the global media as a degree and then you could take some options, you know, modules from uh, international relations and politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and the diplomacy department, but you could do the other way around. So yeah, check each. Program. Yeah, I, I'm thinking, for example, to take uh, politics and international relation and choose, uh, for example, uh, political communication or something that relates to. You could do that. You could do that. Either way is fine. Um, it'll be good to have you as a student either way. So whether you want to uh, uh, to be the uh, MA Global Media and Communication or whether you want to take the uh, the the uh, MSc in, in politics and international relations, you're most welcome anyway. Thank you. But just check and see which one you'd rather take, you know, sort of which one is going to suit your, uh, your needs further on uh, as you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to uh, see whether anyone else has any questions, but it doesn't seem to be. But what do you think, Laura? 
No, I think we can um, wrap up. I think most of the questions um, have been answered and your emails in the chat and people are very welcome to get in touch with us if they would like any general information about um, applying. The only final thing to say is that there is a student and alumni panel taking place at two o'clock, which you should have the Zoom details for. So if you want to hear from our alumni and to hear about their experiences, perhaps which careers and fields they've gone on to, then that might be useful. But I think we're fine to wrap up and finish there, Dina. Thank you so much, Laura, and thank you for your help. And thank you all for coming. Look forward to seeing you. Do apply. Come and join Fingers us. Fingers crossed. Come and see us. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.